The hour showing at 6, I want to open the Ben Hill County Board of Education's meeting for April the 9th, 2024. It is not right. Okay. I want to welcome everybody uh, here tonight. We seem like we got quite a crowd and a good reason for some of it. I'm really excited about that. And uh, I do want to welcome you all and thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Also, want to welcome our online screeners. Okay. With that being said, Mr. Palmer, would you mind giving us the invocation? Okay. <clears throat> Father, this is a day that, that you have made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it, Father. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to be at this appointed time and appointed hour. I pray, Almighty God, that everything that we've done throughout the day has been pleasing in your sight. Forgive us for anything that we've done that sins against you and against your people. Ask all, Almighty God that you continue to bless Ben Hill County school system as we continue to seek higher and higher levels of education for Ben Hill County. I pray, Almighty God, that we continue to do the best we can to secure a bright future for our students. Continue to bless our school board, our principals, our superintendent, our teachers, our parents, our kids, and our community as we work together to make this education system work for all. We pray right now in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I need you all to look at our agenda that's been presented to us. Um, the floor is open for a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. Okay. Um, the only thing I'm asking is that we pull one thing off the agenda, and that's the superintendent's evaluation that we were going to do in executive session, if that is all right with everybody. The consensus is yes. Okay. All in favor of the agenda, with the exception of that one item, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Ms. Teresa, did you approve the agenda? Yes, I approve. Okay, thank you. Um, we have two members that's on online, okay, y'all? Just want to make sure you know. And we do have enough to meet our quorum. With that being done, we're going to make our announcements and recognitions at this time. Yes, ma'am. Um, Coach Roger Merritt is going to come up and uh, talk to us about Malcolm Burris and his accomplishments this year in wrestling. <laughs> and we welcome his family to the Ben Hill County Board of Education meeting. Yes. And um, we are excited to hear about his accomplishments and uh, what his future looks like for us here in Ben Hill. He's a great, great student athlete. And we appreciate y'all being here tonight. Well, I think I'm going to turn over to Mr. Alfonso. <laughs> 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 um, just a little bit of history. Um, Alfonso and I both wrestled. He was one year younger than me. But oh. we wrestled together in high school. And we're fortunate enough to have his son, Malachi, and my son, Eli, are both around the same age. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've known Malcolm for a long time, too. And his parents have supported him and Malachi in um, traveling to national tournaments, um, going outside the state, getting training. They really put a lot of effort and time into resources and to helping them be successful. Because in wrestling these days, uh, what is a little different from me and um, Alfonso wrestled is we could we were under Coachella, so we, we were really tough and we were in good shape, and you could find success. Uh, with those two things, and if you know a few moves, you could be pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, uh, wrestling has advanced. Um, it, it's it's um, it just takes a lot of effort and time and 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 to hone your skills. And so the technical side is, is really moved up. And so anyway, with that being said, um, I haven't had a chance necessarily to coach Malcolm a whole lot because in a gap when I when I stopped coaching, mm -hmm. he started coming through and getting older. But he was with our youth program. Uh, but this year, I did get a chance to, to be with him every day during practice. And we traveled together. We've done stuff together. We just got back from Virginia Beach on Sunday. And um, he, he did very well, competed with the top kids in the nation. And uh, as far as being a state champion, um, you know, this is number one as a sophomore. Uh, yet last year, he was a placer. And, uh, you know, I don't see him stopping. <laughs> and, you know, he puts the time in at, at practice. Uh, he's a kid that you can depend on. Um, I think Dr. Sims would attest that, that he's a great kid at school. Um, he gives you no problem. You ask him to do anything, he does it. Um, he never talks back, yes sir, no sir. 
and uh, he's just a special kid. He really is, and we're, you know, it's a pleasure for me to, to be his coach and be a part of this journey with him. And um, you know, his parents, you know, you, you got to give him and his granddad back here. And, Absolutely. You know, their family is just um, <coughs> what you like to see that support coming through uh, Fitzgerald. And so, um, uh, Malcolm, you know, uh, I could go on and on, but you know, your work ethic's great, and whatever you do in life. Um, for that work ethic you have, you're going to be successful. And the respect that you give others, and um, yeah, I just, I've never seen, you know, really react in a way that's negative. Uh -huh. um, he was very upset this past weekend because he didn't get where he wanted to be. Uh -huh. um, when you're competing with the best kids in the nation, uh, NHSCA uh, National Championship, um, um, you're going to run across kids that are just they would do this all the time, but but you know, he came back and says, "Hey, I'm gonna train and do what it takes to be you know to be the best." And so, um, regardless where that journey takes him, that attitude will take him a long way in life. So, all right. Well, Malcolm, come on up. Let us shake hands. Shake hands with a state champ. Thank you guys for recognizing him. You're not going to say anything? Yeah, come on. <laughs> well, I don't really got much to say, but I just want to thank everybody for the support. And um, I'm going to win some more state champions. I'm going to get, right. get two more. Let's go. And I'm going to have three wings. <laughs> Last year I got fourth. It was a uh, it was upsetting, but I put in the work and I can't got. <laughs> Sorry, this is my. This is my <laughs> That's all right. I came back and I got first. So I just want to thank everybody for the support, and I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we uh, were presented two awards at the Georgia Education Workers' Compensation Trust to the Ben Hill County Board of Education for dedication to safety and recognition of an outstanding safety year. Uh, that was our first award. All right. And our second one was the Ron Anderson Safety Award presented by the Georgia Education Workers' Compensation Trust to the Ben Hill County Board of Education <coughs> for dedication and commitment to loss control and safe work practices for 2023. All right. So at this time, I'll present these two awards to... Uh, Chairwoman Brooks, and uh, great thank job. You, thank you. Oh, I did it all by myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, though, y'all. Thank so you. We'd like to recognize our staff, uh, mm -hmm. especially our um, all of our principals, all of our assistant principals, our uh, maintenance, bus, transportation, food, nutrition workers, all of our teachers, para pros, everybody in our school district who has to do with, has. Who has a part in safety every day? Every day. Um, we have a um, evaluation every year where they come around and you know give us pointers on where we can uh, be uh, have better safety practices, and we put those things in in place. And uh, we have been recognized for that. I'd like to thank Roger Merritt and Mr. Uh, James Sermons for their work with Workers Comp yep. and Miss uh, Casey um, Hampton. And uh, we appreciate everything y'all do for our school system. And what better? What more could we want to say than we're doing what's right for our um, staff, employees. And staff. employees. That's exactly right. So thank you all. And on top of that, thanks, Don. we also want to thank you yes, as our Please. leader and superintendent. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Okay, you, I hope that everyone's had an opportunity to look at the minutes from our call meeting session from March the 5th, 2024, and then our regular meeting from March the 14th, 2024. And the floor is open for a motion. If you want to, you can take them together. Uh, motion to approve the call meeting minutes of March 5th, 2024, and the regular meeting minutes of March 14th, 2024. Second. Any discussion? Any omissions, deletions, or corrections needed? Okay, all in favor of the minutes and from uh, March the 5th and the regular minutes from the 14th, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any, 
Thank you, guys. Any um, opposed? Okay. <laughs> Motion approved. <laughs> okay. Do we have any public comments before the board tonight? <coughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we got three tonight. Uh, just want to remind any speakers before the board that's doing public comments, there are just a couple of things. Uh, you get up to five minutes. Also want to make sure, please don't mention children's names unless they're your own children or children or any other children in our school district. And I also like to ask that you don't mention the name of staff members, okay? All right, with that being said, Ms. Daphne Williams, would you like to come up? Okay. It's been a while since I've been, because my generations are separating, and now I got a new generation coming in. <laughs> but um, what I want to address with the board members is that I don't want you ever to be afraid to make tough decisions because someone's going to say, or you're being racist because you didn't side with this side, or you're being racist because you didn't side with that side. I want this board to be a strong board because it's very diverse, so all children are represented. I had a little problem with the bus situation. Now, we sit, we, we, we loan the bus out for them to go to a college visit. I had no problem with that. <laughs> but where my problem came in was when we got cheerleaders, even the soccer team at once, see, I have, I have individuals nieces and nephews, now that's all into this stuff, mm -hmm. that they didn't have rides to the game sometime. Or the cheerleaders would have to ride in the bus with their players. It's just, it's, it's like, you know, we all from the old school. You know you put women, you put young women and young men together, things are gonna happen. And if you don't prepare for it, then it keeps on happening. But I, that's the one thing I had a problem with. Now, I would like to, I'm talk, I want to speak to the superintendent. I want to challenge you to stop putting Band-Aids. I mean, I'm assuming, that's from my point of view, it's nobody but mine. Let's not put any more Band-Aids on the special needs program and other things that are going wrong in our school system. If we're going to count, if we got people, if we got students that are at the other school that is of age to be graduating, but their numbers are not being counted, and that's the reason why the gra graduation rate is great. But then when I look over here and go to another school, they're wearing uniforms that everybody objected that I, I wanted them to have. That was been several years gap. You wasn't superintendent then, okay? But we got to get some type of, you know, things. And then I want you to also be transparent with the board. They should never look surprised when, pe when parents come and say something to them. Or they should never be like, well, I never heard that before. I mean, it's, it's, it's on you because you answer to the governing body, and the governing body governs you. And then I had another thing that I was a little myth about, this early graduation thing. Now, I graduated from class 87. We didn't, I had all my credits, but you know what two choices I got? Either I can do DCA, which all of y'all remember, mm -hmm. Mr. Sawyer was my instructor. Mm -hmm. I did DCA, and I, Mr. Sawyer helped me get a permit to get a job <clears throat> to work at the local restaurants. If you didn't <clears throat> work on the work program, you had to choose ag, or you had to choose home ed, or you had to choose something else that you wanted. It was always an alternative. You didn't get to walk around here not being, I'm not saying they weren't productive, but nine times out of 10, if I ain't gotta go to school, I doubt I'm gonna go look for a job waiting to march across the state. Then we have students that graduated early assuming that they can still play in these sports after they done graduated early and they can. Because now you're done here. The only thing we waiting is to give you your certificate. So that's the basic, that's basically what my thing is. I would like for the board to be more advised of what's going on. It's a lot of things going on that even maybe you don't know. And if you don't know, you are over the teachers and the staff and the stuff that's up under you to find out what in the world is going on. We got a problem here with special needs. 
I, I'm not. I'm not really understanding. Especially, it took me to be around a child to understand it is more serious than what I I took it for granted then. Mm -hmm. So we got to open up the door, and I want y'all to be more. I, w I want all this that if it's a black event and if I say something, I'm gonna be racist. If it's a white event, if I say something, I'm gonna be racist. Y'all are here to govern this the school system. That's what this board does. Spend the money wisely and spend the money where it can be an impact. We have a career academy out here. There's no reason why we shouldn't have a work program where kids can go to school and go to work. We shouldn't be saying, well, you can go, you can go home. College is not for everybody. This is an ag, this is an ag area. This is a timber area. We got big industries <clears throat> out here that need workers. And why not let them work with them if they can make money too? College, yeah, college can bring you, I mean, you can get a degree, you can get a lot of money, make a lot of money, but everybody's not cut for that. All I want this board to do is be more informed by the superintendent and be more transparent. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Appreciate that. Uh, next we have Ms. Hope Harmon. Good, e good evening. <laughs> My name is Hope Harmon. I'm the mother of three children who attend the Ben Hill County School System. All of my children either have a 504 or an IEP. At the last school board meeting, I, may, I appreciate several of the male school board members for listening to my concerns after the meeting. And they all came from a place of understanding my frustrations. And I truly appreciate the four males that stood, that um, talked with me. I realized after the meeting, this truly would be an opportunity to bring awareness and inform. So this evening, I would like to address a couple things with the board. Administrators and school resource officers are being put in functional behavior assessments and IEPs without the proper training. There's case law already that's shown how dangerous it can be to put SROs in a child in a child with disabilities plan or anything without the proper training. When I asked last meeting, when I asked what the last meeting I had with the school contract at BCBA, would the school administrators and SROs be properly trained to have an interaction with my severely autistic child, I was told no. This is not safe, nor is it in the job description of four SROs. Our school administrators are not trained either. They're not trained in de-escalation, elopement, sensory issues, or anything else relating to children with special needs. So they should not be included in these plans. And I can tell you from personal experience, they are in my son's plans, and I'll be happy to share it with you. Since rooms at each school. I believe that sensory rooms offer a great benefit for children diagnosed with autism and children with sensory and processing issues. These sensory rooms can even be great for teachers. Sensory rooms are filled with special lighting, sounds, and objects that will help a child regulate through overstimulation and stress. Our school system used five, almost $500,000 in CARES funding from furniture. Surely each school, school in our district could be given $5,000 for a sensory room and an appropriate placement for children in need. I invite you to go to BHMS and look at their sensory room. The teacher hasn't been given the adequate funding by our school system for this room, and our children with special needs deserve more. Elopement concerns at our school. My son elopes. He, is, he, he does not understand danger. He does not stop. He does not understand stop. At BHS, BHMS, where he is being placed next year, there is no fenced area close to the school. He will receive adaptive PE. It is my understanding that this is held in the gym or outside with the buses pick up and drop off. This is a great safety concern for not only my son, but also several other children. At this time, the BCBA that the school system has contracted does not have a clear plan to help my son with his elopement issues. These plans are typically facilitated by registered behavior technicians, but our school system at this time does not plan to allow ABA private outside ABA agencies in our school and has no plan to hire specially trained people to Im implement these FBAs, which are the functional behavior assessments. One school board member asked me after sharing my concerns last month what solutions I might have. One, have your administrators go through more than one day of de-escalation training. The school system has several PLC days throughout the year. I believe the school district would greatly benefit from having an actual hands-on ABA clinic to come to do training on de-escalation, elopement, behaviors, and other concerns related to children with IEPs and 504 plans. Take SRO officers out of the plan. I believe our SRO officer officers do a great job at keeping my school safe, but they're simply not trying to handle FBAs or IEPs, especially with severely autistic children. 
Two, fully fun sensory rooms at each school. It would be great to have more than one sensory room at the school, but please reach out to the severe SPED teacher at BHMS. She has had to collect things over the years because the school has lacked funding opportunities. There are so many things that the middle school sensory room already needs, and I believe that the school does have funds that could cover this. Three, put a fenced in area closer to the school at BHMS. Uh, currently, only the track area is fenced in. My son and his peers deserve an area where they can play outside safely. Four, listen to parents. Parents are the experts on their children. We know what does and does not work for our children. It does not matter how many years of professional experience you have. Parents know their children best. In the past, I have asked for a special education advisory board much like the governance committees that we have at each school, but have been continually denied for no reason. We are, get, we are just getting training um, for special needs after I personally made a complaint to the state, which is something I should not have had to do to get what my child deserves. This could all be resolved with proper communication, training, and an advisory board where parental concerns are heard and addressed properly. In closing, I would like to say I am not complaining about teachers. I support our teachers. I think our teachers do an amazing job when they are right, but I will call them out when they are wrong. My issue is the decisions being made at the board level by staff that have no real interaction with my child or my children, but their decisions impact our students and teachers who are in the school setting every single day. Once again, I extend the invitation to anyone on this board to go in my son's class and observe him. And I would like to personally thank school board member Jeremy Cox for taking me up on that offer the last time I was here. He went with me and he observed him and he saw him with his own eyes. It is easy to say that I'm being difficult, uh, that I am making these things up. It's easy to say I'm just trying to give the board a hard time because these are all comments that I have received since the last school board meeting. But I am not. I'm just trying as a parent of a severely special needs child to ensure that my son gets the very best education that he deserves. My family and other special needs students simply want to be a part of that family that that $4,000 a year billboard boasts about. Thank you for your time, and I will be emailing you with more information. Thank you, Ms. Holland. Okay, with that, we got Ms. Trotter coming up. Hello, everybody. I'd like to follow up behind what Ms. Hope Harmon just said. I had two children to elope from Ben Hill Middle School. One, it took about two hours to locate her and find her as well. She, both of them are autistic as well. I'm here to talk about parent involvement. So we had a curriculum change at the primary school, and they held a, what they called a, meeting to go over that curriculum but when we got to the meeting it was a PTO meeting and yeah and our um, our questions and stuff was limited we had to stay over after the meeting and speak with the, the principal about our questions and um, so the curriculum wasn't really explained like really good or anything um, and so my issues was as my son He's autistic as well, he's a six-year-old um, in first grade. So this curriculum, this new curriculum involved decoding. And anybody that has autistic children know that decoding is a very difficult thing for them if they are little, which he is very little, he's very smart. He has a 96 average in math, mm -hmm. and that's because his, his obsession is numbers. So he focused in on numbers but he has a hard time with rhyming and decoding. If you tell him what rhymes with pig, he will say mud. He's very literal. And so I reached out, his grades never got any better. Um, the, at that time, my parent portal wasn't updating, and so I reached out to the principal and I showed her, I say, see, um, my, my parent portal isn't updated. And I checked my parent portal like clockwork. Anytime it goes off, I'm checking it. I'm screenshotting it and I'm sending it out to the schools. So she, she reached out to, the, um, to IT and they fixed the parent portal. This was in January. My son was still, they told me that they do something like a, like a shifting type thing where they, they teach them, but then they keep moving even if the child hasn't gotten it. Well, I asked for SDI 
And it seems that the school district here does, does not know what specially designed instruction is for kids with IEPs because it's supposed to be individualized. Because I sent an email out to the high school, I sent an email out to the high school and the email was basically for this virtual day, it was basically asking for SDI. And what I've also asked for this SDI and what, and what they, uh, this SDI looks like for my child. And when I asked, the lady told me, she went to the Georgia Department of Education website, copied and pasted uh, uh, um, the definition for SDI and sent it to me and said that's what my child was receiving. So we, that's, that's facts that these teachers, um, SPAD teachers don't, do not know what SDI means and what it looks like for a child individually because it's not supposed to be broad. It's supposed to be for that child and for their deficiency. So back to the primary. I, was, I asked to go in and observe to see my son. I asked for a BCBA to go in because I got several behavior charts for him as well. He's not bad or his thing is they want me to medicate. Mm -hmm. His thing is staying focused and he's always staring off when it's time to read or write. And so I asked to go in and observe him. Well, what I got here is parent observation agreement. I got a parent observation agreement, meaning that my parent involvement, I'm on a contract if I go into the school and observe my child. When it states right here on page 40 of the student handbook that I'm welcome to go in, it does not state anywhere on page 40 through 43 that, that this contract existed. This contract was actually created for a child that I was going to the school advocating for it, and the parent wanted to go in and observe her child in the class. So I was waiting on the opportunity for this contract to be presented to me for one of my children. So my son, one of the, the staff members, which is here today, actually took her time and broke down to me what these Acadian scores mean. And I thanked her for that. I gave her a hug because people thought I was crazy. When you have a child that their retail is for, and their decoding, all of the decoding is in the red, that tells you, a, this, like she explained to me, this paper tells you a story about your children. And it tells them that I have, my son has decoding issues. And instead of them doing SDI on my son, a specially designed instruction that teaches him a little different from other kids, that what, what other kids learn, they did not do it. They just keep brushing it off. So mm -hmm. I'm having to constantly pay an attorney to come in and help me get these services that I need. By me bringing in my attorney, the school goes to Atlanta and get Reagan Soils and bring her down here. So they're paying two attorneys. What a waste. When all they would have to do is listen to me versus paying two attorneys to come sit in a meeting mm -hmm. and I have to bring my attorney in to fight for my kids. My money is long and I will do it every time. Mm -hmm. It comes to one of my children, I will bring that attorney down here and pay her two fifty dollars an hour to come down here and advocate, help me advocate for my children. They're just that important to me. Now what I passed around is a copy of his math grades at the time that I couldn't see and they gave me a copy of and a copy of that contract. Also his math, score, math, math scores show that he is <coughs> below grade level, or right at grade level, a little bit below. Which, that, the coding issues and what his map score shows, shows a little bit of dyslexia, which falls up under the umbrella of, guess what, autism. If this school would listen to me and stop fighting me on everything, we, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be here. But let me tell you, I have enough topics to come in here and fight for it for the next two years. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming. Every month I'm gonna come with a different topic until I see change. Also, I had to fight just to get a copy of the curriculum. I had to bring my attorney down here just to get a copy of my son's curriculum. Now mind you, I did file a, file a OCR complaint against this, this right here because guess what? I still hadn't got in the classroom to observe in the classroom because the contract makes me sign that I won't interact with my child who's autistic and who sees me is gonna run up to me. So I'm still haven't gotten into the school, which is a violation of Title I. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Trotter, for bringing this to our attention. I want to thank all the people who came in and talked to us today. Of course, we will take that under consideration, and our superintendent will handle um, any issues that we may discover on our side. With that being said, what's next on the agenda? Okay, we have our system reports. And um, that's the consent agenda items. Do I hear a motion to approve consent agenda items A1 through A5? Motion to approve consent agenda items A1 through 5. Is there a second? Second. All right, thank you. All right, let's go through it. Jeremy, do you have the general fund or you want me to call it out? Jeremy? You can call it out, please. Okay, no problem. General fund for the month, so we can be transparent, <coughs> is $4,315,480.32. It's a little bit of difference of $637 uh, from being actually balanced. Pay bills. Pay bills, fund 151, transparency, it's $153,675.48. Fund 100 for the month of March, 3,000, um, excuse me, $3,401,197.32. For total expenses in March of $3,554,872.80. East Plus. <coughs> uh, East Plus for the month of March mm. well, dipped a little bit, about $18,000 from our average. I guess nobody was spending any money. So we got $197,642.42 for the month of March. Facilities report. Any questions on the facilities report? <laughs> Y'all have any questions? Everything looking good? All right. All right. Sounds good. So no problems. Yeah, it is kind of low this time. I see. All right. Um, our monthly athletic reports, if y'all take a look at those, we have both the, um, the high school report and the middle school report. <coughs> any questions about those? Is our athletic director here? No. Okay. Any questions about those? All right, hearing no questions, we're gonna go ahead and take it to vote. All in favor of the consent agenda <coughs> items, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? Motion carried unanimously. All right, let's look at our transportation requests. And I think we only have one out-of-state trip and that is to Orlando. Just came back from Orlando. <laughs> okay, I need a motion to approve the trip for the eighth graders to go to Orlando. Make a motion we approve the uh, trip to Orlando for the eighth grade middle school class. Second. Got a second. What they going for? Just a mm -hmm. fun trip? Oh, that is fabulous. I hope they enjoy themselves. You need chaperones? All right, all in favor of approving the trip for the eighth graders to Orlando, Florida, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye, Jeremy. Teresa? Yes. Teresa? Teresa? Aye, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so it's unanimous and the motion carries. All right, we got a director's report on our Fisher High School Board of Directors, um, their governing board. Do we have a report? Just information. Just information for us? <coughs> yeah, they didn't quite have a quorum, did they? No, no. Okay. All right, that's an information item. And we have Mr. Matt. You want to talk to us a little bit about technology report? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, just hit on a few things, y'all. Um, hit the top of the list. This was pretty exciting. We um, we wrapped up our application for uh, a grant that would uh, be funded, uh, give us a hundred thousand dollars for some cybersecurity enhancements. So we're very excited about that. Um, and look forward to hearing back from that. I believe the program outline says that uh, I want to say the decision would be announced in May with the funds actually being dispersed in June. Uh, 
I'm a star car correctly on that, so um, definitely look forward to, to, to hearing back uh, on that. Um, as I mentioned last month, I also supported auto enhancement training for the high school uh, faculty and staff. And we are also beginning to start some of the kind of pre-processing for some of the new Chromebooks and stuff that we will actually deploy over the summer in preparation for the next school year. Um, and then uh, lastly, under current uh, initiatives, we're working to rebuild uh, the Fuel Master system for Dr. Barnes. As y'all know, as we discussed last, uh, last month, it, it did suffer a crash, um, but the, the database was recovered, so now it's just a matter of, of rebuilding that. We, we needed a part to do that. Um, so that came in today, actually. So um, literally working to get that up and running for Dr. Barnes and hopefully can restore that service soon. Excellent. Looking ahead, uh, just supporting some of the, you know, the common things, common year and things, uh, Acadian some growth measure testing, as well as um, milestones um, and, and support that goes along with that. So um, that's the technology report for the month. Congratulations on getting almost 100% of your tickets done for this month. Now I have a quick question yes, about the $100,000 cyberspace grant. <laughs> Cyber security grant. Um, are we going to pinpoint that at any one school, or is it just going to cross all technology? So the things that we uh, put into the application would be centrally uh, deployed. That would apply across the board to to all schools. Okay, and cover the board of education office as yes, well. Yes, basically everything behind our internet. Because, yeah, because hackers are just breaking into everything, and I just want to make sure we're covered because that could really mess us up. All right, any other questions, any comments? All right, thank you so much, Matt. Okay, we got curriculum instruction. Got a report for us, Mr. Webb. Uh, not so much a report, but uh, some information. Um, I thought you might like to hear from, from the classroom about how things are going. And we've had, and you know, we've had a lot of visitors from other school systems come and visit with us in the, in the past couple of months. And there's been a lot of good things come out of that. And uh, I wanted you to hear from uh, a kindergarten teacher, Ms. Brandy Petrie, um, who has been uh, teaching with us for a long time. And uh, she is also um, in letters training, which we, I presented to the board. Uh, she's fixing to complete her first year, and it's a two-year endeavor. Uh, she's one of 10 teachers and six administrators, myself included, that's going through this training. Um, and so I would like to over to Ms. Brandon Petrie. Okay. Welcome, Ms. Petrie. Um, I was just kind of asked to share some successes that have been happening in my classroom since starting this new curriculum. Um, I've been teaching for 17 years, all kindergarten, all here in Ben Hill. Um, previous years, I can see in my classroom um, since starting this new curriculum, they are able to seem quicker to apply the knowledge that they have. Um, for instance, being able to decode and read um, these words, spell the words, um, write sentences. Used to, I would see it would be well after Christmas before they were able to actually apply the letters and sounds to read and decode the words. I have found this year it was well before Christmas that they were able to do this. And I am proud to say that all 18 students in my class this year are able to decode and read words. Um, don't say that, can say that I've ever had every child in my class in 17 years able to do that. Um, so that is a huge success um, for me. Um, I like that it is all in one platform. I don't spend hours after school, mm -hmm. at home, looking for stuff um, that may or may not be beneficial to these students. I'm not looking and having to purchase things. It's all right there for me. It's easier to plan. Um, the platform's really easy to use and it's all right there and you can print it right off. Um, <clears throat> I love that it explains, you teach the children, but you also explain to them why you're doing the things that you do. Um, so if you tell them um, some of the rules that you do, you let them know why it is like that. For instance, like we were doing um, CK this week and you let them know that if it comes after a short vowel and you hear that sound at the end, you're gonna use the CK. And for a lot of them, it clicks. Instead of just telling them, you have to tell them why. why? It mm -hmm. means a lot more to them. 
<clears throat> my children are engaged. Um, the structured literacy part, I will say, is my favorite. They enjoy that. They are excited to tell you what they know. Um, we're learning things that, I'll be honest, when I looked at the curriculum to begin with, I was like, wow, kindergarten doing this? I wasn't so sure about. <laughs> but they have been able to do it, um, no problem. Um, doing this letters training, I feel, has really helped me understand why kids are struggling to read mm -hmm. and ways that I can help them. Um, they did a little activity when we started the letters training. And they gave us like um, Greek letters and symbols and they tried to get us to be able to read the passage. And it was very frustrating and very hard. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a clue what these symbols were, what these Greek, I could not read it. It was, it was very frustrating. And the presenter said, that's what your students feel like when they're trying to read. It's Greek and too. that hit me. <laughs> it hit me hard. Okay. Um, change is never easy. But I think that was the point that it hit me that I was going to embrace this and do everything I could to make my students be successful. Um, and they have really just bloomed this year with it. And I'm um, Now this letter saying it did come from the science of reading? Yes. It's part of that approach. It's completely based in science of reading. And that's what we had talked about, that this is actually, this uh, this cohort is actually funded through the Rural Education Initiative. Mm -hmm. So we've got these people in this training, no cost to them or county students. And so we already show data that our children are improving since we moved to this new program. Excellent. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, thank you for the opportunity to do the letters. That has, it has really opened my eyes to some things, and I appreciate that opportunity. But I do believe if more would embrace it mm -hmm. and do it consistently, that you will see the growth in your classroom. What's the hesitation? Just change? I think just the change. Um, and it's just different from what- I mean, what you've already gone to school and learned how to teach, and now you're coming out of school and we learn teaching you a different kind of methodology. And I think it's just different than what you're used to. Yeah. Um, some may have got comfortable with what they were doing in their room. Um, and I know change is never easy, but whatever's gonna benefit your students yes. is what we need to do. Okay. Uh, Brandy, do you think more teachers would benefit from this letters training? I mean, <clears throat> I guess those ones that are still kind of on that fence. Absolutely. Absolutely. It just, it, it lets me, it, a lot of the stuff that we're learning in the letters aligns right with the into reading. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing the into reading and you're thinking, why are we doing this? A lot of it with the letters, I see, oh, this is why we're doing this. Okay. It connects. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be very beneficial. Mr. Webb, is this a curriculum that also is shared with our children with uh, special needs? Yes, ma'am. And this is tier one instruction. Mm -hmm. And when we look at tier one, tier one is what every student receives. That, that is the level that um, everybody receives tier one. And then as, as students, if they start to struggle, mm -hmm. um, we look and we move down to tier two. Mm -hmm. And of course, they receive special instruction during tier two. And, and a lot of times we do catch those students up and we get them back in tier one. And it's really fluid between tier one and tier two because we're all different. And oh, yeah. I may struggle with something that you may excel at, so I may need to go to tier two for a while. Mm -hmm. and, and then a few weeks down the road, I may be flourishing with something because my brain works that way and yours may not, so you may be in tier two. But if somebody stays in tier two for a long period of time mm -hmm. and we start seeing, okay, we're, we're getting further and further behind, then we move them into tier three, which is intensive training, and that's very small group. Uh, we generally try to keep those groups smaller than seven. I like to see them at five or four students where the teacher can really focus on the students and actually um, actually work with those students. And of course then, uh, if the student is still not growing um, with that kind of intensive instruction, uh, then we move to testing and all that for individual and, uh, IEPs. Okay, okay. But uh, it is our purpose and our main goal is to make sure that we ensure 
that all children succeed in our school district. Thank you so Thank much. You. I appreciate y'all's commitment. Okay. Let's go down to new business. Ms. Superintendent, you ready? Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a request to approve the purchase <coughs> order to Ernie Morris Enterprises. Um, we actually bid the uh, purchase of alternative seating furniture uh, out about a month ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they came back with the lowest bid, which was around $272,000. Um, we uh, received 11 bids. Um, they uh, had the, the highest score on our rankings. And um, we have $350,000 to spend in alternative furniture um, with our Georgia Peach tax credit grant that we got for $560,000 this past year. Um, we have to spend the three fifty dollars on the alternative seating. Um, so if you could approve the purchase order up to $350,000, we will not go over that because that's what's been allocated by the state to us from Georgia Peach tax credit. Um, we will be able to move ahead with that purchase. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve that uh, tax credit. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Second. Now, Jeremy, that's for up to 350000 You and Teresa heard that, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, any comments or questions? What is what alternative is furniture? <laughs> um, it's a more flexible seating for students where they can work in small groups, where they can arrange their desks to be partners, be triads. Be kind of like what we got at the, at the high school, high school in the room. media center and everything? Mm -hmm. And in the classroom, yes. Okay, okay. All right, any other comments or questions? Okay, we have a motion that's been properly seconded. All in favor of approving the purchase order for Ernie Morris Enterprises for furniture at the Ben Hill Middle School signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that motion carries unanimously. You guys on board? Yes. Teresa? Yes. Thank you. All right. Oh, I'm excited about the flag football. Secondly, uh, Dr. Sims is going to come up and uh, request approval for creation of uh, flag football. Um, if you have any questions, you can direct them to him. <laughs> you gave up the volleyball. Yeah. Gave up the volleyball, huh? Uh, we've got a high interest in uh, the creation of flag football uh, mm -hmm. right now. It's kind of going across uh, the state. It's it's probably grown uh, trifold since they started it a few years ago. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few female athletes that are interested in uh, doing it. I think the, the Powder Puff game during homecoming week kind of got their blood flowing for that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just asking that we can create that. We've got a... Uh, We've went ahead and declared we can still back out, but we've declared and they've put us in a region. Um, but now we got to start uh, getting coaches and doing tryouts and, and all of that information. What time of year would this be played? It's in the fall. Okay. So it starts in practice starts in late September, and then the season starts in October. There's like a two-week overlap uh, between softball and flag football. Um, we talked to Dodge County, who's currently in our region, who, who does it right now. And uh, they do have athletes that do both. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they start practice, flag football just practices later. And then they'll go to softball practice first and then go to flag football. Much like, you know, right now, uh, softball runs into basketball and mm -hmm. competitive cheer mm -hmm. runs into basketball. So it's just your coaches working together to ensure that you can help students do both. Have you done a survey to find out if we have girls who are truly interested? Yes, ma'am. And so we do? Yes, ma'am. And do we also have team, you said our region, so we have, we have other people to play? Yes, ma'am. And we don't have to go far? Well, originally they put us in a region that uh, Coach McDonald and I thought was a little far, and we appealed that placement to the GHSA, and they granted our appeal. Mm -hmm. So now we are, uh, they had us going like up to Macon and, yeah. and that way, and now we're in South Georgia much like most of our sports play now. Excellent. Any other questions or comments? And so that's going to cost us, uh, what is that, three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000? Yes, ma'am. Um, the athletic department's got that money, I assume. If you allocate it. If we allocate it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that's part of the supplement package, which mm -hmm. is not part of the athletic department budget. Oh, okay. It is funded through y'all's approval and allocation and through the board. Mm -hmm. So okay. so we would need that approval there. Okay. Now we would fit the bill for, for all the equipment that is needed. Um, but 
So you have coaches and referees as well that you have yes, to pay for that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. We need a motion. Shirley, I have a question. Well, go ahead, Teresa. Okay. Um, and I, don't, I, I apologize if I did not hear this covered um, in what the comments were made, but what, what are the um, interest level of people that can participate in this sport from the school system? Uh, he did say that he knew that he had enough girls, so I guess you did a survey? Yes, ma'am. Um, what grade will it be? Will it nine, just be high school, 9th through 12th? 9th through 12th um, girls are going to be participating. Did the survey go out to the entire student body in those grades? Or, I mean, who participated in the survey? The high school students. The high school students. Okay, do we have, a, do we have the... Um, the data? Yeah, do we have the data to show how many responded and what was the percentage of those that responded? Uh, no, he does not have it with him, but you can get it to her. We can get it to you, okay? Any other okay. question? Well, I mean, I, I just wonder if this is really a support that we need to use all what we already have, especially uh, with the cutbacks that we're, we're, we're facing already. Mm -hmm. Is this a sport that we really need? Um, well, I don't want to answer that, but Title IX, the fact that we need to put as much money into girls' sports as we possibly can, I see that it as another also, viable one. Right, that is also... That <clears throat> volleyball just wasn't getting it, right? No. <laughs> and, and then that's also part of the equation is, you know, we... we you know, football's the big yeah. kahuna. Yeah. And uh, when we can add a girls' sport, yeah. um, it's not going to be equivalent to football. No, of but when not. Because you don't have all the equipment, right? But when you can add a girls' sport, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we did a, a flag football game and had, you know, one for each grade, and I think the total was over 100 girls wanted to do it. And they constantly yeah. have been asking, like, are we going to do this? Are we going to do this? And mm -hmm. I think I, after homecoming week, I said that up here, that we were probably going to look to move to that. But um, we've got a high interest level. It's, it's another opportunity to provide our female students with a, another sport. Um, that's, that's good. You yeah, I remember saying, I guess, the, uh, I guess they just call it powder puff. And I think we, I remember you, you guys had a, had a game. And I mean, uh, a lot of a lot of the places are, are doing this now, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, uh, because of Title IX, you know, have this sport. Uh, it's not something we have, you know, that we're starting that we have to commit to if it doesn't do well. But I think we should uh, allow the, the, uh, the uh, young ladies the opportunity if they want to play, to play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, Madam Chairman. Yes. Go I'll ahead, Jim. I make a motion that we move forward with the uh, flag football program. Okay. So a second. And we have a second. Any other discussion? Any other questions? I feel really good about it, too. Uh, my daughters would have loved it. <laughs> okay. All in favor of um, starting up a new flag football team for our girls, um, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Teresa. So we got a six to one motion carries. All right. Uh, we're at that point now where it's time for us to name a, a delegate to go to GSBA for our legislative priorities. I think it's already too late for someone to be a part of the government operating committee. They've already met. Uh, but we don't have any legislation that we want to send them and tell them we want to uh, change anything right with the GSBA priorities. Nobody's brought it to my attention. However, we do need to name a delegate. I would like to nominate Teresa Davis again to be our delegate for GSBA for the, uh, the voting. Second. Second. I, I nominated you, Teresa. You, you, gonna, you, you okay with that? Yes, ma'am, Alex. Okay. <laughs> all in favor. All in favor of Teresa being our delegate signified by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay. Delegate indeed. I'd like to nominate um, Jeremy Cox to be our alternative delegate uh, in case Teresa, for some unknown reason, won't be able to make it. Second. 
We have a second. Oh. You okay with that, Jeremy? Miss Brooks, he's not going. Oh, he's not even going? Oh, 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 uh oh. Thank you for letting it's me know. It's got to be someone You're who is going. Okay. Kenny? Who would like to do it? I don't it? know who's going yet, so I'm not sure. Look that way. Guys, that's just in case Teresa can't make it. He's doing it virtual. He's doing it virtual? He's going to do it virtual yet. David? No. Young man? All right, Dave, um, I nominate David Garrison. <laughs> okay, um, any discussion? All in favor of David being our, our alternative delegate, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Motion carries, congratulations, both of you guys. That's always a very interesting thing. I always come in there and sit in. I just love to hear it. Okay, we got some events coming up, folks. Did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we got a call meeting, you guys, April the 15th at 6. Mm -hmm. uh, That's our one-hour finance training yeah. will be included in that. A one-hour finance will be included? Yes, and that's by GSBA requirement? <coughs> okay. All right. Thanks. So uh, we really do need everybody to be here for that. April the 15th, mark your calendar. We got our Top 10 Banquet coming up the 16th. Top 10 Banquet will be held at? 630 at Wiregrass. 630 at Wiregrass. Thank you so much. Regular monthly meeting will be May the 14th, 2024. Um, this will be where we'll have our retirement reception. Uh, that's going to be prior to that meeting. So that's the meeting you got to come early at 5 o'clock so we can congratulate our retirees. Then we have our senior... Hey, um, so are we, we going to have that meeting here or yes. at the primary? I mean... Oh, we did do it at the we primary did, one know. time. Sure did. Is that what we're going to do it this time? I'd like to do it at the primary. Yeah. We are? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Yeah, that's oh, a yeah. nice little Pre-K, okay. I'm sorry, not primary. Yeah. Pre-K, pre 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 yes, yeah. so sorry. We're making a correction now. We won't be able to do uh, stream live. Is that going to be an issue? We can live stream. Is it at the pre-K? We can live stream. Yeah. It'll just be yeah. Facebook yeah. live. Yeah, media room. We're off in the other room. That's right, that's right. Okay, then we're going to have our regular meeting scheduled for the 14th of May. We got senior recognition um, night. It's going to be also May the 14th, and it's going to be at our high school from 6.30 to 8. <clears throat> we have our uh, College and Career Academy Honors Night, May 16th, 6.30 to 8. We have Ben Hill Middle School Honors Night on the 20th, 6 to 8 o'clock. Our calendar is getting full. Mm -hmm. And then graduation is planned for May the 24th at 7.30. Is that a Friday night? Yes. And the only reason I stopped there to ask this question is, Osceola graduating on Friday night as well? I don't know. Okay, but there's a lot of parents that have asked me questions about that conflict, if they got children here and children there, and we was wondering if y'all could coordinate I'll ask it. in I'll, the coming I'll year you, uh, to see how we can do it. I'll ask them. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, and we got GSBA Summer Conference coming up days in Savannah at the Hyatt from June 6th through the 8th. Uh, this is our governance training. Look for governance training. Da, 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 da. And what do we need to do by that? We got all that done. Yes, ma'am. We have to make sure everybody has evaluation. the training. <laughs> okay. Monday night, we'll go through everything else that needs to be done. Okay. Sure. And then y'all tonight will let me know who's going to go to this conference and what you want to attend. Did we skip that? Or am I, I'm not I can answer. send you an email. We can do it by email. Okay. I've already sent you my answer. Yes, you did. Okay. All right. Please, you guys, remember by July 1, send in that personal finance disclosure report. I hate to do a um, GoFundMe, but it's $50 a day if you are late. Okay. All right. And then GSBA exemplary board application is due. On this 26th, so we really do need to go ahead and finish up our evaluation on our superintendent. And then we have our winter conference that's not scheduled until December, December the 11th through the 13th. We'll be at the Waverly, Renaissance Waverly, as always. All right, we're down to personnel. Uh, do we have a reason to go into executive session? Anybody got any questions about anything that they saw in, under personnel that you want to discuss? 
since we pulled out the superintendent's evaluation, is there any reason to go into executive session? Jeremy, Teresa? No, I'm good. Okay, well then let's just roll right along. Under recommendations, you want to talk to us about recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Um, the following recommendations would be Angela Davis would be a 49% hourly uh, Ben Hill Middle School and FHSCCA language arts consultant. Um, Lisa Daniels, a behavior specialist at Ben Hill Primary. Jeannie Anderson, a FHSCCA healthcare science teacher. Ashley Brooke Jernigan, FHSCCA counselor. Brandon Pitts, FHSCCA band director. We got a band director. They all come highly recommended. Yes. Make I a hope. Mo Second motion to accept the recommendations of the superintendent. Second. 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 Okay. Any questions? Anything? Any comments? All in favor of superintendent's recommendation for the hires that she just announced? Sick about us saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We're going to our retirements. Seems like I got a question here. Let me see what this says. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's do, you want to go through your retirements? Uh, Tammy Howell. T I'm sorry, Tammy Rowell, Isom Harmon, Pam Williamson, Nancy Jolly, Sharon Eckler, and Ida Atkins. Mm -hmm retiring we're losing some good folks here but I, I understand that uh, when it's time to move on you're ready to go yes, <laughs> okay. do we have to approve these we just have to accept them it is an action them. item yes ma'am and the floor is open thank you to approve. thank you second you think any of these folks will come back to us no later on <laughs> maybe I just hate to lose institutional knowledge like that I know we have to but anyway, okay. <laughs> Says the newest retired person. <laughs> All in favor of approving and accepting the retirements of the people that was named by the superintendent signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Let's do resignations. These are information. <laughs> this is for information? Yes, ma'am. So the board does not get to uh, up or down it? No. They just decide they don't want to be with us? Now, I know that uh, we are looking at budget cuts and everything, and I notice in this group that we have a lot of 49% hour percent, 49 percent people that are leaving us. Um, they're doing a resignation. Yes, ma'am. And that is a voluntary resignation, correct? This is a funding issue with the uh, HTA teachers. We mm -hmm. have a grant that we get once a oh, year. Oh. So they were informed at the beginning that it was a one-year opportunity. Oh. And we have looked at our budget carefully uh -huh. and um, tried to um, make strategic decisions about our 49% and our um, just different funding um, okay. opportunities. And would you, for the record, just go ahead and read those names off for us, please? Lavita Jordan, Sheila Jefferson, Joanne Henley, Jennifer Webb, James Sammy Reynolds, Pam Bishop, Kathy Lovett, Christiana Paul, Maggie Boxy, and Rebecca Cook. Okay, so that was just for information. No vote required. Personnel transfer. Madam Superintendent. In an effort to um, save money in our budget, we decided to remove uh, or move Will Oliver to the interim assistant principal at FHSCCA where he will receive a supplement increase of $3,500 um, to uh, move him up to the high school in order to um, save a position at the high school. He's gonna become the assistant principal where we will cut out the dean of students at the middle school. The middle school has 200 less students than the high school does, mm -hmm. and there is no need for a dean of students and a, uh, two administrators. Okay. And don't, don't just for clarification, we don't get any money for the dean of students. No, we do not earn that position. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, this is a transfer, and the reason the board has to approve it is because there's an increase in pay. Yes, ma'am. $3,500. So all in favor of the recommendation for the personnel transfer of Will Oliver. We can make a motion. Oh, we have a motion. motion. Uh, I'll make a motion for Thank the superintendent's recommendation for personnel transfer. <laughs> Second. Thank you so much, Jeremy. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Appreciate that. 
Uh, I believe that ends everything that we have to do tonight. I will tell, tell you guys, and I do apologize to y'all that I don't have the superintendent evaluation all completed. Thank you all for who have turned in your form, but there seemed to be some a bit of confusion whenever I was reviewing it, and it has to do with um, we received the evaluation slip that we need to put our numbers on, and we received the strategic plan, the five-year strategic plan, and they did not line up, and so it's very confusing trying to figure out which one you were given the actual rating for. And so rather than try to guess and get it wrong, our superintendent deserves a lot more than that. Plus, there was no place for us to make any kind of remarks about any of the areas. So I would like us to review it again. We can still get it to you, Debbie, in time. I promise, okay? <laughs> but I, I've got another form that I want y'all to use for it, and I will get it to you, and I'll get it to you through email, okay? okay. All right. Is there any other business before the Ben Hill County Board of Education? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>